What's up, tribe? We are talking about morning rituals today. We're talking about how Rad and I hack motivation, mindset, and um, of course, we're going to elaborate on the 30 day challenge um, task so far, or well, not task, the 30 day challenge rituals, which is the daily dose of UMS um, at home workout, our 10 minutes of meditation. We got 10 pages of reading, an awesome book. Hopefully you guys are ripping through that. We're halfway through the month now. We wanna be halfway through that book. And uh, we introduce this week daily affirmations. Daily affirmations are a critical um, component of reprogramming our thoughts so we get different feelings, behaviors, and outcomes. We're going to go deep. We're also going to do a QA. and a We're going to talk about a couple of great questions and posts that have come through the UMS Online Coaching Facebook group. A lot more coming up. Hey everyone, in case you haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. That's my brother Yanni Burmeister. We're the co-founders of Unity Gym, co-creators of the Unify Movement System, where we turn driven people into superhumans. And uh, if you want to know how we do that, if you want to know why we've made that statement, it's because we've created a program that has a balance between strength and flexibility. It's very unique. We've never seen it before. And uh, it really does turn people into superhumans. If you want to know how we do it, you can grab one of the free blueprints, the strength blueprint, flexibility blueprint, or the nutrition blueprint there's a link in the description of this video and uh, yeah we're talking today about our morning ritual we're also going to be going into some really cool um, questions that our online tribe have asked us so if you're not aware if you're new to this we are doing a 30-day UMS challenge we're in lockdown we're all figuring out how well we're coaching you on how you can use this lockdown period to come out a better person, a fitter person, stronger person, more flexible person, more knowledgeable person, and a person that's more focused and uh, more driven and more goal oriented. And excuse me, more successful, <coughs> more successful. The person who's more successful. And it all starts with a morning ritual. It starts with a morning routine. The first battle that you have in the morning begins when your alarm goes off and it's whether you snooze that alarm or whether you um, get up straight out of bed with the intention that you had when you got up and that's spoken about in this book here, Extreme Ownership. The second part of a good morning ritual which we've been working on is daily meditation. If you haven't done so already, download the Waking Up app, the Sam Harris Waking Up app. If anybody wants the, you, you get a one, uh, you get five free meditations from it anyway, but there's a 30 day free trial that we can give you a code for. Um, so let us know if you want that. Second part of the morning ritual is to read 10 pages and uh, or 10 minutes of an audio book, which is this is the one we want you to read, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babbitt. And the third part of the morning ritual, which we only introduced this week, is affirmations, to read out some uh, affirmations. Before we go deeper into that, I want to do a big shout out. I've never done this before. I'm going to try. It might take a little moment. Um, but we have about 80 new people in the You're not going to read UMS. every one of them, are you? Why not? No, don't do oh. that, man. No, it's too much. Come on. <laughs> not on the show. People are watching. We've done oh. the shout out via the post. All right, all if right. If you're mentioned in that post, we love you. Thank you for yeah. joining well, us. Well, there's one person at the end of that list who I'm super pumped to have in the group is Roger Talevsky, and he is an old uh, Roger. Uh, client, client of mine who owns a, a successful gym out here in Sydney. Old client and, and uh, long-time friend. Long-time friend and, uh, and, and colleague now in the industry who's yeah, running yeah. an f45 gym so gave, hello roger yeah, gave up a very successful career to uh, to join the fitness industry and yeah, uh mistake that was no. <laughs> no good on you mate on uh, you. very few people um have the balls to to do something like that when you've got um mortgages and uh, kids and you know yeah things like that's that. exactly right so well done yeah, there's a bunch of awesome people there we've already got some great uh, c uh comments and uh stuff coming through on that post and uh we will certainly enjoy working with you guys and interacting with you guys in the coming months years everything why don't we get into one of these questions let's answer Craig's question oh we want to do that before we talk about our morning rituals but we did just talk about the morning rituals we didn't we didn't. I didn't go deep into that I want to All go right, deeper okay. into that All right, I want to sure. go deeper into the concept of reprogramming thoughts because a lot of people don't understand the power of that a lot of people understand that yeah if you read good books you're gonna learn uh, I think one of the biggest revelations that, that I had when I started to learn about this stuff, you know, 15 years ago, whenever it was, is that before you, if this is the first time you've ever even heard about the idea of reprogramming your mind, then you're actually living your life reactively. 
Yep. You react. You, you are. There's there, you're this. Reacting is, you're to reacting to stimulus. what. So something happens. You react to it. You either react positively, negatively, or ambiguously. You know. You you just go eh, whatever. Um, but you, you react. You know. So somebody tells you, hey, um, guess what? Tomorrow you got to come in for work early, and you react to it. Um, you get told that you lose your job, and you react to it. Whatever it is. There's a very different way that you can live. You can actually live in a way where you are actively thinking about the things that you want and creating a plan for yourself and setting it out and, and, and repro reprogramming your mind. So instead of reacting, you're acting on, uh, on things. Yeah. And that is a, comp it's a revelation. If you've never heard of it before and you're not even, there's no alarm bells going off in your head as we say this, then I guarantee you it hasn't sunk in yet. The magnitude of what we just said, yep. it is so, so powerful to understand that you can actually change your thoughts. Yep. You can change the way that your mind is programmed so that you stop reacting to things the way that you do and you start acting yeah. in a way that gives you the results you want. Yeah, I want to share a, a, a quick story. I know Rad's going to freak out the moment he hears story because he knows that I like to waffle, but I want to share a quick story to, to, to frame I might just get how, some marshmallows. Yeah, there. to frame how powerful this is. Um, uh, the, the, my first experience with reprogramming my thoughts came when I attended a three-day workshop with a guy called T. Harv Eker. It was called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. He's also published a very, very successful book called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And uh, I went along, I got convinced to go along to this workshop uh, from a business mentor of mine. Because I, I started um, in my early 20s and teens, I was a very reckless person. I was, a rattle back this up, I had suffered depression most of my life, which made me live day to day, and I had major anger management issues. I used to blow up every, every, like at the smallest little thing, I was probably almost... Uh, when I think about it and I understand more about psychology, almost bipolar. Um, and uh, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. And I used to, you know, like there wasn't a weekend that went by that I wasn't drunk and in a fight or something like that. You know, like I was pretty bad. I worked as a security guard um, at, at nightclubs and things like that of, of the night and as a motor mechanic and then personal trainer of the day. I was a boxer, so that didn't help because I, I, I knew how to fight. And uh, I was reckless. And a part of being reckless was that I spent more money than I earned. And I did that for a decade. And by the time I was um, about 28 or maybe 30, I was in about $65,000 of credit card debt spread out over about four or five credit cards. And I just didn't care because I just had this attitude like, well, I could die tomorrow, so who gives a shit about money and this and that and whatever. And it wasn't until I got to about 30 when I realized, well, I've survived this far uh, and I need to start sorting myself out and we wanted to start a business. And I just knew that if I went into running a business with my attitude and with my money uh, programming, uh, I would be a disaster. And my father was a disaster financially. At that point, my mother was a bit of a disaster financially. We had a bit of a blue a family blueprint, which is what T. Harv calls it, of um, piss poor money management. And so I went along to this thing thinking, oh, what is this crap going to be? And it changed my life. And he spoke heavily about everyone having a blueprint for everything in their life, whether it's health, relationships, work, money, and your blueprint sort of dictates the way you think about that thing. It's like your computer software, the program that you operate on. And, um, and it was really, really formulating a bad habit for me around money. And Rad had a, a very similar problem. Now, fast forward a few years after coming out of that um, conference, I, I, I ended up going and buying the book and then read the book and then got my partner, Kalisha, to read the book, got Rad to read the book. And I'm pretty sure you got your partner to read the book. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Usually people do it the other way around. They read the book and then they pay the thousands of dollars to go to the conference, the workshop. But I actually got gifted the tickets from my business mentor. I never would have spent the money. I wouldn't have been able to afford to spend the money to go. But he couldn't go on the day and sent me. And uh, it completely revolutionized my life. And when I saw the power, uh, you know, T. Harv was about creating money mantras and um, affirmations and commands specific to changing your programming around money. Now, within two years, I paid off $65,000 of debt without a dollar changed in my income or revenue. 
So nothing changed with the amount of inflow of money. I was still earning a piss poor wage as a as a startup personal trainer, and I worked nights, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night as a bouncer at secu- running security at uh, a nightclub, and um, I you know I probably earned about the average wage. And uh, with those two incomes combined, I worked extremely hard, but what changed was my thought process around money and the way I spent money. And it was so powerful and it happened so quickly. In two years, I was debt free. And uh, I then went, okay, this has got some serious legs and we started to introduce it to all aspects of our life. So I cannot stress to you how powerful this is. I mean, it changed your life. You know. Oh, absolutely. And um, it, it's you know it sounds airy fairy. It sounds a bit out there, but um, I cannot stress to you how powerful this is. Well, everybody that doesn't live their life by creation says the same thing. Ah, yeah, whatever, whatever. But guess what? Everybody that's successful will tell you it's because of stuff like this. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. I, I haven't met now. You've got to understand what we mean by success as well. We're not talking about anybody that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I'm yeah. not talking about the kid that got given uh, a BMW for their 18th birthday. And, and $150,000 to start their first company yeah. or something. Yeah, that's not know. what we're talking about. We're talking about people that are successful that started with nothing. Generational, we, who created generational wealth and, and we success. we have been fortunate enough to work with several people who are well and truly more financially successful than we are, who are about t- between 15 and 20 years older than we are, and who went from rags to riches and are some of the wealthiest wealthiest and most successful business people in the country, maybe even in the world. We're not talking about billionaires here, but we're talking about multi, multi-millionaires. Um, and it, yeah, it's, uh, so we, we've, we've seen the traits that are within these people firsthand. You can hear people like Tony Robbins, like Richard Branson, um, you know, talk as well. Uh, people like T. Harv Eker, and they all say that this is true. So I guess the first step that you've got to do is you, you, you've got to say to yourself, um, am I willing to listen to the people that actually have created the results that I'm looking at, or am I going to listen to everybody else that hasn't created the results at what they're saying? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, yeah, look. You've got to overcome ego. You yeah. know, the only thing standing in your way of adopting a, a, a ritual like daily affirmations, meditation, is your ego. Yep. Your ego and your dogmas. Yeah. And your dogmas feed and fuel your ego. It took you know? me. It, it took me probably the better part of a decade from being exposed to this stuff before actually applying it. Mm. I was exposed to it, and there was something within me that was partial to it. Like I was like, oh yeah, you know, maybe this stuff could work, but I didn't put it into practice. I didn't really do it and practice it. And it wasn't until I got to a point where I, for the big thing for me was watching the change in you because yeah. you started getting into it a lot before I did, and I saw the change in you, and I was like, this is just insane yeah. you know my brother's a different person now yeah. um and i was always um for our whole life i was somebody that had it a little bit more together than you did and the tides started to turn you know the coins started to flip and i was like wow this is there's something going on here and so that's when i started to really get into it and um yeah it's it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Mm. And so, um, look, I, I was lucky because I had somewhat lucky because I had a, a mentor who was actually a personal training client of mine who we decided he was much further along than me in business. And he was a big believer in all of this stuff. And uh, and he kind of gave me an ultimatum. He said, look, I'm happy to mentor you, but you've got to adopt what I say you, you need to do, you know, because you're so far from be, having what it takes, having the right stuff, so to speak, to be a successful entrepreneur. And although you're a great personal trainer, you're going to crash and burn if you try and open a gym you know yeah. you, the moment you go from <coughs> having to cover rent at a small uh, at a big box gym that's buckley's in comparison to what we were biting off with opening unity uh he just said you won't survive you know yeah. you're going to have overheads that you, that will that, that'll be you, you're trying to play a bigger game and you're not ready you're yeah. not ready to take the field you know and so i was sort of forced to i, I knew that i needed his help because he was helping me create a business plan and, and he'd just done an mba in business and he ran a you know multi multi-million dollar successful company and um and he just said yeah look you need to do this it needs to start with your mindset and then i worked with another mentor kerwin ray and another um, um, Sean Greeley we worked with a lot of mentors and they all were like you know you don't know what you don't know and that's what's letting you down yeah you know? and look the thing is none of you are, in, are watching this because you're here for financial advice or business advice you're not in this group for that but that was just Yanni's 
example of his exposure to this uh, to these kind of rituals and why he did it in the transformation that we had because we didn't need a transformation with our health and fitness we were personal trainers and we'd already managed to create uh, a high level of success in that arena um, with all the other mentors that we'd had you yeah. know but where you know Yanni's sharing that lesson with you so that you can understand because if you're here there's, there seems to be two kinds of people that are joining the, the Movement Mastermind group. And the one that we have more exposure to that I get, uh, actually, I won't even say two kinds because I'll, I'll say there's, there's the one kind that I'm certain of. And then there's a lot of people that I'm, I'm not 100% sure why you're here. But the people that I'm certain of why they're here is they've been training for a while. They've, been, they've tried a bunch of different types of, of uh, ways of training and haven't been able to create the results that they want. And they've come here searching for something bigger and better. Yeah. And the people that are willing to take action get exactly what they're looking for here. What we offer is a bigger game. We yeah. offer something that um, makes you super strong, super flexible, and teaches you how to move in ways that you've never been able to do before. We've got some of our legends in the tribe that are, um, Tom Wood, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how old you are, brother, but I know that you're, you'd be at least in your 30s um, and maybe you're even close to my age. I know you've got a couple of kids and I say that because you told me that you'd been training for 15 years before you started doing this and worked with all of the big name online coaching programs, trained on his own for a long time and what he's achieved with us is just unbelievable when you hear his testimonials. So, um, and, and what we're, the reason why we're saying this is because we want you to understand that the the health transformation the transformation from where you are now to superhuman with your body and your physique it starts here you know it really does yeah. and if you want you want to you know people are saying oh i want to um I, I really want to get the middle splits and i can't get there what exercises do i need to do well that's the easy part yeah i mean here's the program there it is yeah, do it yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so easy what exercises do you need to do that's not what you need to work on yeah. what you need to work on is what's going on up here that prevents you from having the guide and not using it. That's so, so, so important. Uh, anyone who's watching, rewind and listen to that twice, three times, because most people are here for flexibility or calisthenics. And those two things are ga a game of millimeters. Progress isn't linear. It's not like strength training. When you go and load a barbell up or dumbbells, you know immediately that the improvements or the progress because there's numbers written on the weights. Mm. And, yeah. and you can see, okay, as long as I'm getting enough rest and enough um, uh, recovery, you're going to progress fairly lin linear, um, especially if you're tracking your progress on a program card like you should be doing. But with calisthenics and, 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 uh, and flexibility training, it's not linear. There's so much neurological adaptation occurring underneath the surface that you cannot see. It's, it's invisible to the naked eye. And so it's, you've got to draw motivation from other areas. You've got to draw motivation mostly on an, a, 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 a relentless pursuit and, um, and obsessive um, attraction to the process of working out, of doing the work, of grinding, because you don't get the same um, feeling as you do from strength training, uh, you, which is that you, that you constantly see a tangible result every time you go do a workout. Um, physique training as well, because you can strip down in front of a mirror and see that you come out of the workout instantly jacked mm. you know the, the moment you walk into the gym to the moment you walk off the gym floor there's a difference in the way you look and that creates a feeling you know and that becomes addictive that's easy it's easy to draw motivation from something you see immediately mm. but it's it's hard to draw motivation from something that comes from a less tangible result and that's yeah. why it's so important to be working on your mindset if you're here to level up flexibility and calisthenic skill because you know, if you want to master calisthenics, it's a decade long process. Yep. It is such a long process and it's a game of millimeters to overcome and, and, and learn how to maximize your inefficiencies in your body, uh, leverage and mm -hmm. things like that, yep. you know. And flexibility for many of you, it's going to be similar because you've, uh, you've you know, um, 
spent you've <coughs> neglected flexibility for a long period of time or you're starting at an older age where your nervous system is very reinforced the the neural pathways and the brain mapping is very etched in stone so it takes a while to break down those inhibitors that are preventing movement you know now i like to say that with with the right flexibility training uh, you can really get a good transformation in 12 months to 24 months, depending on whether you're, where you're starting from. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's like three times. With a, you, you can experience a visual body transformation in 90 days. Mm -hmm. You know, if you work real hard at it, you can completely transform your body visually in 90 days, you know. You can't do that with flexibility or calisthenics. Yeah. It's, it's, it's physiologically impossible. Yeah. And so for the majority of people who are here to transform their flexibility or to level up their calisthenics game, you got to start by changing the way you think about success. Yeah. You know, you got to change your success markers. you got to change the way you feel about it. Yeah, well, everyone that's here, I mean, we're, we're not the... We are not the gym and we're not the um, online coaching guys that promote the, the quick fixes. We're the people that teach you how to get, you know, r really amazing results that people, that most people just don't understand how to achieve for themselves, how to create this balance between strength and flexibility, you know, within the one workout. Um, it's, a, it's like the, um, you know, the golden uh, egg that people just can't seem to, you know, get their hands on. So, yeah, and it, it just starts, starts with your mind. So if you haven't done it, um, get started on this 30-day uh, UMS uh, challenge. If you haven't started, it just starts by downloading that app, the Waking Up app by Sam Harris, and starting to do a daily meditation for yeah. 10 minutes. That's it. And That's the meditation is important as the first step because it clears space for the rest. It opens you up. It le yeah. levels up your consciousness so that you, to you remove start ego, to yeah. look at things differently. You start to allow room to bring new stimulus into your brain. Now, what we're talking about here um, ties in very well with the two um, questions that we want to address today from our UMS online coaching group. But I just want to go very quickly because uh, Rad doesn't have a screen in front of him, so he can't see the interaction <coughs> that's going on here. I want to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, first of all, hello, Steve Cavanna. Um, he's he's agreeing and, and, and enjoying the workout. NLP, Tony Robbins, etc. The base to all self help development. I am was a psychologist, and it is very powerful. That's really really cool to get that um, uh, confirmation. To get that confirmation, brother. Yeah. Thank you very much. Steve Cavana has also said Blueprint is your frame of reference for how you look at the world. Hence the rules you use when making decisions. Absolutely true. Now Lee Clements is also in here, and she's coming. Um, is, uh, Lee Clements is a, a, a pretty sure it's a female. Female, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, Lee. We've got about four Lees in our tribe, um, and a couple come to the gym. Love this discussion. You two guys wouldn't have picked that you would be into this stuff. Lifestyle changes, and she's saying again, love this discussion. This is this literally makes up the backbone to our day, Lee. Um, we Rad and I are, are very very habitual um, in what we do, in how we attack it, and we go through phases where things sort of drop off a little bit but um, the things that I do without fail no matter what and even if I've got kids hanging off me I meditate every day for 10 minutes I read my affirmations and I read a good book for at least 10 pages uh, at night and I've even started to digest a lot more content through podcasts and audio books to and from work so um, you know, uh, I, I digest content at quite a fast pace, but sometimes I'll read the same book three or four times. If I finish a book and just go, wow, that was just intense, insightful. I did that at the start of the year with a book called The Obstacle is the Way. I read the entire book cover to cover three times, back and forth, because there was just so many quotes um, that I wanted to highlight and take out. I'm going to put some of them on the wall in the gym here because I loved it so much. So yeah, we are we are really big on this. Okay, let's jump in. I'll let Rad uh, answer this um, first one because he's already dived into it um, a little bit. Craig Jenkins, he's um, basically um, aggravated an injury in his shoulder during the his I think it's his first testing cycle. Did you gather that? Yep. I don't want to read the entire comment out because it's it's long, but he's basically um, um, you know quite upset. He's finished the foundations program and then he's gone into his first testing phase and he's injured his shoulder. 
in the first testing phase and is saying that he's quite upset, it's an old injury and he's feeling like he's going to go back and do the whole foundations program again. Yes, and um, uh, yeah, well, why don't you start? Why don't you start with how you feel? Because you have comments. Yeah, here. look, the first thing I'll say, Craig, is uh, as disheartening as these things are, in my experience, an injury is always a window uh, and an opportunity for massive, massive growth. Yeah. Um, whenever I've had a bad, the worse the injury that I had, the bigger um, leap in my growth and development that occurred straight after it. Because you either sink or swim, you either let the injury consume you and you wither away, or you the injury is just that thing that makes you go, oh my God, I really need to work on this. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I'd love to know what movement it was that you were working on the, in the testing week that um, aggravated it. I can only imagine that it would have been one of the vertical push movements, so a shoulder he's, press. No, he's talking about here, I used to have a similar thing happen before when bar bench pressing, which is why I moved to dumbbell only, chest fly, shoulder lifts. I thought that after the five minutes, probably, I think he's referring to the fact that it, it may have happened during the bench press, but... He doesn't know. Yeah, he's saying that he thought that the foundations program would have fixed him and it would have been okay after that. In most cases, that foundations program fixes most people's old issues. It, it does. The majority of people, um, it, it, it absolutely fixes, like the amount of people that have come in and said, oh, you know, my God, that shoulder pain that I've had for five years is completely gone after two or three weeks. Um, just from creating symmetry in the body, symmetry from left to right and symmetry from agonist to antagonist, which is opposing uh, movements, opposing muscles in a joint. But in some cases, it doesn't. In some cases, there's more you have to do, which is why I really strongly suggest that you do an online physio consult with Phil. Um, any advice that Yanni and I give right now should be considered anecdotal and not specific advice. Yeah, I, th I think we can go further than that. Well, I am. We, I am. we have this amazing shoulder rehab program. Well, that's right. That's which right. was d which was put together with the um, assistance and help of Phil. That's right. So, so hear me out. Hear me out. So, in in the rare cases, um, Craig, you the foundations program isn't enough, and that's when you need to go into the shoulder rehab program. Yeah. And the shoulder rehab program is phenomenal. It was created by myself in alignment with Phil and then with Yanni, you know, helping and, and working on it. But when I say it was created by me, it was because I, I created it and then did it myself for several months to get my shoulder better. So what do I think you should do? I think that there, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Specifically, you don't need to go back and do the whole foundations program again. That is not, I wouldn't call that the solution. I, I want to jump in because I, whenever mm. someone says something like this, um, I like to I like to go a bit deeper and say why, what, what makes you feel like you need to do that whole foundations program again? Because there are circumstances where people who have experience come in and they do that program and they make a mess of it. The purpose of the foundations program is to relearn correct movement patterns. And a lot of what I when what I find is people who aren't used to training, who aren't conditioned, get a great result from that. People who are used to training and are, and have lifted quite heavy, if done properly, get a better result, because for the very first time they iron out structural imbalances in their body that they may have had for decades, that they've neglected or that ha have really affected the way that their body develops and they train. But there's a caveat to that argument, which is that if you're ego lifting, meaning you're selecting weights based on what you think you can lift, Not what and you can what you lift. can actually lift with proper form and technique, then you can make a real mess of that program. And I am not suggesting that that's you, Craig, but I would like to know why you feel like doing that program again would be beneficial because maybe that's what you're alluding to. Maybe you feel like you didn't pay it the respect that it deserved at the time and you feel like you could have done it better. Because it is hard for Rad and I to create programs online and then have you guys do them without us being able to see how you're mm, doing them. Yeah. In the gym, it's very different. We can walk up to someone and say, man, you're making an absolute meal of that. Uh, you need to lower the weight. I'd, I'd like to make a point though here with um, that, that everybody in the UMS online coaching needs to do more of. 
Craig, I don't remember seeing you post many videos of yourself asking, are you doing it the right way? So to go through three phases of a program, which you've done each phase for between three and six weeks, meaning the whole thing took you between nine and 18 weeks, and that's if you just did it in a linear way, um, without asking for help and then getting to the end and saying that you injured yourself, I think you, you could have gotten more out of this if you asked for help along the way more. Um, and because, that's what these groups are for. Yeah, that's yeah. all we're here for. We're not, we're not, I mean, we, we spend our time answering these questions and, and doing shows like this because we don't have more specific things to, to answer. People aren't asking us the questions that we need. And we always, always answer the questions of the people that are in our UMS online coaching group first. There's some people that post a lot of videos. There's some people that do it. Um, Aiden is one of them, Which right? Which we're going to get on to Which we're going to get to. Yeah. And if you, you should see the amount of support that he's getting. It's like I, I read over the comments from our more senior students and, and if they've said something that I think could be said better, I'll jump in. But they get qu answers before I even get there from people that know more than they do. Yeah, you that's know? right. So you've got to ask the questions. You don't want And a big part of it is not just asking the questions, because he's done that here, we need to see videos of you performing the movements. Yeah. You know, that's the yeah. only way that we can give you the level of coaching that you deserve. Yeah. Um, and it's the only way we can give you the level of coaching that we give the guys here at Unity Gym. Yeah. Because we, we can then see what's going on and, and, and give you pointers and, and feedback and things like that, yeah. you know. Yeah, you need to post a video and say, hey, this, is, this happened when I was doing this. What should I do differently? Yeah, that's right. Because now, the final thing I want to leave with on that uh, is... Th that I want to make this absolutely clear to all the viewers or all the people listening on the um, Sound of Movement podcast, exercises don't hurt people. I want, to, I want to say that again. Exercises do not hurt people. Piss poor load management hurts people. And what I mean by that is that if you're not managing the amount of stimulus, the amount of load, the accumulated load on a muscle, or the intensity load, meaning the weight that you're lifting based on your technique and your prepare, physical preparedness, then you will hurt yourself. It's only a matter of time. Mm. You know, whether it's an acute injury or an overuse injury, it's going to come, mm. you know. And I just want to re reiterate this point. Because it's so important that people understand this. And this is one of the things that you need to be careful of when you're testing. Because testing is not about moving a weight from A to B. If you're doing that, you're powerlifting. You're a powerlifter. Powerlifting is about moving maximal weight from A to B. Okay? When you're testing your strength, there are variables in there set up and designed to make sure that you avoid this sort of thing. The tempo has to be 100% strict. If you're breaking that, that four second down tempo, is it three, three or four? Seconds. Three seconds, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, the bottom of the rep should be achieved. And then one second up. If that breaks, then the, the, the load is too weight. You're not managing load properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you break in form at all, if you deviate from first rep to sixth rep, we test six RM. Um, to sixth rep, the reason why I question that is because we used to test three RM. Um, if you deviate in form and technique in one of those reps, then you've not managed load correctly and you've failed. Okay, it is not about pushing until you completely break yourself. That's not the way we strength test because, of course, then we're not managing load properly. And what happens when we don't manage load properly? We get injured. Okay, now what we can do is the best of our ability by setting these protocols in stone and, and, and making them like the Ten Commandments for everyone. But it's up to you guys to understand and, and to respect them, you know, and I'm not um, I'm not calling you out here, Craig. I'm just saying this as a lesson because everyone can gain value from this. And this is why I wanted to talk about your question um, so much on today's show it is so important that people understand the logic behind load management and mm -hmm. why we put these protocols in place, you know. Mm -hmm. But then most of all, what Rad said is super important. Make the most of your training program by posting videos like Aiden Potts, which is what we're going to talk about right now. I know that we're going a little bit over time and Rad's going to start to get nervous about this, but um, I do want to talk about this. Aiden Potts has posted a video of him working on scapular control outside of his regular workouts. 
and he's saying he's quite shocked at how different his right arm and left arm move. And there's a noticeable difference here. He's, he's posted a video, for those of you who aren't part of the UMS online coaching group, where he's um, doing the prone scapular uh, control or strength drill with a dowel rod behind the head and also the scapular push-ups, which we've been doing in the UMS at-home workouts. And you can clearly see that the right side um, is sort of dropped in comparison and they're moving a little bit differently. Now, first and foremost, um, uh, and this is just an observation, Aiden, from me, um, there's a, a thing called dominant side scoliosis, which it looks like you've got here, which everyone has. I have it myself. I'm, I'm assuming, and you can call me out if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that you're right-handed because the right shoulder seems to be dropped forward a little bit. Um, but, um, you know, everybody has a level of dominant side scoliosis unless you're perfectly ambidextrous, meaning that you've developed both sides of the body evenly. And I would just like to say, you know, don't get too caught up on it. Uh, unilateral training is a is the gold standard way to improve any um, imbalances in the body, meaning using dumbbells, using single arm movements, as opposed to bilateral barbell movements. Um, but all that aside, just had, the process. I had the worst imbalances in my upper body and a decade of obsessing over trying to fix my imbalances got me absolutely nowhere. And it wasn't until um, working with some really good strength coaches and they said to the, the process of getting stronger correctly will sort it out. Yeah. And what that means is that you do unilateral movements and bilateral movements together, um, which the, the UMS does anyway. Yep. Um, that's why the first few phases of the UMS are all unilateral for this exact reason. And you always choose the load based on what the weaker side can lift and you make sure that you do flawless technique. Yep. That's right. And if you do that and really train with intention so that you can feel that the joint is moving the way that it's meant to and you can feel the muscles working that are meant to be being felt and you're not training with your ego, you have you've, you've have complete detachment from how much weight you're lifting. It's all about the feeling and the right movement pattern. The muscle contraction and the process. It works, its, right. it works its way out and it works itself out quicker than what most people think. It, some people it can take three months, some people it can take a year or so. Yeah. Um, some, some people, people can it can take, take years. Yeah, some people you know? can take a lot more than that to perceive the how however bad your imbalance was um you know how many years you worked on creating an imbalance it's going to take you know a proportionate amount of time to get rid of it but that shouldn't dishearten you you should you the way that you should approach your training is okay cool i've got this now i've been given the solution yanni and rad just told me what i need to do and now i'm just going to focus on the process that's exactly right yeah, yeah. don't get too hung up on it um it's great to to, to have that video reference now because yeah. you can go Check back in every couple can, of months that's exactly right you know and um and it's another reason why you should be posting these videos don't just post the videos for us you know our phones are often not updated often we change from one phone to the next phone and we lose all of the videos that were on there you know if you're not really religious about backing up your content and filing it and things like that this ums um, online coaching group becomes a gateway to you being able to go back and find your old videos you know, because you can just click on the videos and then all the posts there. And I think you can even search for your name and yeah, then can. find yeah. all of your posts. And then you can go back through and use it as a catalog. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to uh, allow this as a, as a, as a, a, an assessment protocol as well in this group, you know, yep. and um, it becomes a really powerful tool. So, you know, first of all, I want to just say well done, Aiden, for continually posting these videos for two reasons. One, you're creating an incredible resource for yourself to be able to reflect and review and what gets measured gets improved and then two you're using this um, group to its full potential mm -hmm. Be because if you're the only one posting videos you're going to constantly get great feedback from us you know yep. don't get too hung up on the imbalance mate everyone's got them just focus on the process and they will even themselves out over time if you avoid lifting with ego because especially if you've got one side stronger than the other it will always do the last rep for you and that's just going to continually um, uh, put a, you know, uh, enhance that imbalance yep. rather than even it out. Always dictate the load, manage the load based on what the weaker side can lift, and over time it will balance itself out. That's it.
Cool, guys. That's all we got time for. Welcome to all of the newbies. I did want to read all your names out, but uh, as Rad cut me off, it probably would have taken too long. Thank you, Carmine uh, readers, our, our leaders, and how you do one thing is how you do everything. Absolutely, brother. Um, couldn't agree more. Lee, uh, thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, guys, uh, we will see you tomorrow on, um, first of all, the workout. UMS and get ready guys we're dropping the, the second phase of the program in two days either tomorrow or Friday tomorrow or Friday yeah I really? think it might be ready by tomorrow we'll see are we going to put it put it up on Friday as the yeah yeah Friday. Sale on yeah, yeah. Friday yeah we'll yeah. do it on Friday yeah. all right cool guys uh look out for my blog that'll be hitting you in, a, in about an hour or two into your inbox and um until tomorrow have a fantastic productive winning day see you everyone health is about performance not just body image you better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there we'll start focusing on movement goals strength goals flexibility goals when you nail that skill it's there forever the body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there it's not the intensity there's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.